I have found the solution. I have found the solution. This is the remedy and the solution for my white brothers and sisters to really understand racism. You see, I'm all about problem solving. I'm all about solutions. I am not here for Oscar so white. You white people, you should know it. I'm not about that. I'm not about crying, crying, complaining, complaining, complaining. I'm all about solutions. I'm about, okay, this is the problem. How do we now solve this problem? And for so long, I've always said that I have no idea of how to get white people to understand racism. And I think this has come from, you know, the, the video that I just put out, which is the whole you know, voice actors thing and, and, and so forth, and having it back and forth with um, Joe Baker, who is who is white. Cause, because again, because he was just saying to me, and this is just what spawned me to think about this and do this video, because he said, look, um, why is it problematic for people doing like blackface or white people acting as black people in comedy sketches when it's coming from a harmless place? It is coming from a good natured place because he would say that, look, blackface in history came from a very, very harmful place that they were trying to offend. They were trying to mock black pe people based on what, what those times were. But for hours of right now, if you look at Little Britain or so forth, they're not trying to offend. They're just trying to tell a joke and they're trying to play into stereotypes to try and tell a joke. And I said, look, man, if we lived in a fair society where there was no racism or, or anything, stereotype jokes can be funny. They can be fun. We've all mimicked an Italian, like for, for me, you mimicked, you know, how South Africans act, how Nigerian aunties act, how Nigerian uncles act. We all, we all do all those all those um, stereotypes, you know. So, but we just don't want to live in that kind of society. And I said that, you know, it will always come across as offensive. And so if you take the viewpoint that to always be offensive, that, that, that's what it is, you'll, you'll, you'll understand, then that's not helpful. That's helpful because if you just want to be offended, remain offended, and don't want any solutions, there's something wrong with it. Hence, why I have see I have issues with the black people who just who need to be be offended, who want to get triggered, who live who are hashtag merchants. There are people out there, especially a lot of specific black people who are hashtag merchants. Not all black people, because a lot of black people actually have sense to, to do things, but some black people are hashtag merchants and just want to be angry. They just want to sleep on on just want to sleep on, on Twitter and just want to be like, oh my gosh, you this why yeah what, what? it's like look and as I said again, you know it's difficult it is almost impossible for white people to understand where black people are coming from. It's almost impossible because what I try and do is okay let me try and put my mind myself inside the mind of someone who is white who's grown up white and grown up mostly around white people and around the white society. From their point of view, racism doesn't even really exist. Even if they view it and they see it either on TV or in the workplace or so forth, if it, they don't experience it, it's like, okay, it's there, but it just would not resonate. Things resonate more with you if you experience it. So for the white person who doesn't experience racism, has anything racism towards them, they're like, why can't a white guy act as a black guy if it's being funny and it's not being offensive? Why can't a white guy voice a black character? It's just voices. So, so what's the what's the big deal? Because they have lived and experienced a white life. And living as a white person, mostly along amongst the white PP people. From your viewpoint is, if you're good, you get the job. It's based on your quality. It's based on your qualifications. You know, it's based on merit. That's because you've experienced the white life. So when black people say, no, the world doesn't work by merit. It works by um, preferential treatment, um, racial association people who you want to hire, people that look like you to hire. And this is this is a white man's world ruled by the white man and white supremacy. So from the white point of view, they say, no, that's a lie. <laughs> because from my experience, from what I have seen and what I have lived, key thing, what I've experienced 
It's about merit. It's not about race. It's about are you good enough for the job? If you're good enough, you you earn it. So I said to myself, what is the solution? What is the solution for white people to understand? Because those white guys that say, oh no, no, I understand my my privilege, I understand about white supremacy, you're just you're you're talking nonsense. So like the Jenny Slate or the Kristen Bell or all of these people say, that, I understand my white privilege. I am I am a terrible white person. I have been awful. I have you know you don't. You're just that's guilt. That's guilt. Guilt is different from understanding. What you want is on is oh, I understand. So this isn't coming from an emotional place. This is coming from a psychological place of all. Oh, I get it. I really understand. You speaking through guilt is not you understanding that. That's you speaking through emotion. <laughs> so all those things. So I don't want to hear white people come up with an ad and say, I understand my white privilege and, this, and I'm, I'm, I'm a horrible white person. I am terrible. I have been a dog. I've been, shut up. Shut, shut, shut up. I don't want to hear that crap because that's just guilt talking. Shut up. Okay, let's let, let's get real. So like, what is the thing? So, so you might wonder, wait, what, why has HH put that picture up, up there? Soul Man. Now, not many of you have may have seen this film. Also, for this, I think this came out in the eighties. Yeah, it came out in the eighties. Look, it's very it came out in the eighties. So, the basic story of Soul Man is this white dude, you know, high society, so much richer, and so forth. He obviously wants to get into this specific uni uni university, but this university, they they the one they have a special black quarter for black people and. Because he doesn't have the good enough grades, or because he can't get there, because they have a certain black quarter, he decides because he's so desperate to enter this university and so forth, he decides to become black. So when he now becomes black, he obviously gets into the quarter, gets into the um, university, but now he now lives life through a black person and sees how people react to him and talk about him and so forth. So he now experiences what it's like to be black. So once he now turns out to be white, he now has an understanding because he's lived an experience being black. The, um, Wentworth Miller. Wentworth Miller. Um, most people that look at Wentworth Miller, basically he's the guy from, um, sure, let me bring him up. And then you, you, and then you guys will know, because he's the guy from Prison Break. Let me bring Homeboy up. He is the dude from Prison Break. And most people... When they look at him, they would think that, wait a minute, this guy is white, and he does look white, but Wentworth Miller is actually mixed race. So sometimes, you know, when, when, you, when you're when you mixed race, you can just come out looking like that, looking like Wentworth Miller. But Wentworth Miller said that's because he, he passed as white, he could really learn and listen to what white people would say about black people and the kind of jokes and just and and their thought processes, which gave him a kind of like an like an understanding. Oh my gosh, this is what white people really think about other black guys that they wouldn't say in public, only within their circles of white pe people. But going back to um, homeboy, um, to soul man. So that is where my solution is. Is the only way. <laughs> white people can understand where black people are coming from because see i see a lot of stuff like identity politics or you just want to be triggered or you just want to be woke all that kind of stuff i said again i'm not i don't believe in being woke or identity politics i, be, I just believe in reality because i i i have a very systematic way of living my life i don't live my life through emotions i live my life of like what is what is what exists? What is what? What is the what is the reality? I'm allowed. What is the reality of the world? What is the reality of the world? And I keep pushing the thought that this is how the world is. Except how the world is. How do we now go through with it? I don't want to hear about what the world could be or what the the world might be. Is what what the world is. So my solution is. <laughs> If and this is impossible, so this is like a sci-fi thing or something. But this is my my solution. If there was a way for every white person to live for a month as a black person and put them into white society, put them into all white schools, 
put them into all white workplaces, put them into an, an all white country, all white environment, and then have them live life as a black person for that month. I believe they will have a greater understanding of, oh, this is where you're coming from. Because being told something is different from experiencing something. You know, I always said that it is arguable that a life experience is much more educational and useful than the education you receive in school. You know, because the education, because say the education that you receive in school, that's just you're just being told stuff and then memorized. Because school is just about memorizing, just memorize it to pass the grades and so forth. You don't really understand it because you're just me you're just memorizing the stuff. But experience, when you live through experience, automatically you have a greater understanding through experience. You're not just memorizing stuff for somebody like, oh, I've lived this. And now understand it, so it, it stays with you. So if every white person was to somehow live as a black person for a month, then they'd be like, oh, okay, I get it. I see where you're coming from. You see, and, and you see, they wouldn't even be able to go to the end route, but there would be a far greater understanding. So I think when I just look at these conversations between white people and black people and whites, because see, I get where white people are coming from, which is why the mistake that black people are making is forcing white people to feel guilty, forcing them to oh no, admit your privilege. Because I, because I, for me, I say, okay, so what? You want white people to give away their privileges? You want them to what? Give you your house? Give you their job? No, that's on. That's unrealistic. I'm sorry. That's that's unrealistic. <laughs> you know. So and people say, so, okay, to, to accept their privilege, what does that mean? Because again. Try and enter the mind of a white guy. So as a white guy, yes, I understand my privilege. No, I don't. Because I've just lived as a white guy and that's it. I how do how can I step outside of my body and look at myself as a white guy and understand my privilege? I'm like, how? I'm just living, I'm just living as a white guy in this in this world. You know, so so but the only way they can understand, because you keep it in a, a brick wall. These statements of my set, my privilege, I'm a horrible white person, it doesn't mean jack, you know? And I just think that's for some black people who sort of get off and really want to just see white people say, I'm, I'm horrible, I'm terrible. I'm like, because eh. what this is about, because this is about being real. It's not about being emotional. It's not about... Um, make yourself feel good or, or, or so much. It's about being, being being real. I don't care about white people admitting their privilege. I, I couldn't I couldn't give it that. You know. Well, for me, honestly, okay, just don't be racist. <laughs> That's it. Don't be racist. Don't be mean to p people. Don't. And if someone is offended, they're offended. See, that's and that's always the key thing. That if someone is offended by someone. They're offended. Like if I crack jokes about Jewish people or I crack jokes about Japanese people and a Japanese guy says that offends me or a Jewish guy says that offends me, as much as I think the joke is hilarious, he's offended. So I'm like, because there are a million, a million jokes to, to crack. <laughs> there are a lot of jokes to crack. And if the only jokes you can crack are jokes that offend people, you're, you're a crap comedian. Okay, you're a crap comedian. But back to the whole thing, yeah, that's, and that is my thing. Now, I don't know how many white people would want to do, do this. I, I expect most white people wouldn't because I always say, like, my theory saying is that everyone wants to be black. Nobody really wants to be black. Just give me your music. Give me your culture. Let me mimic you. I don't want to live your life. Nah, I'm good. I just want your music, your clothes, your fashion, and I just want to talk like, like you. But let me stick with my white friends and my white people. Let me just take that culture Stick with my white people, but I don't want to live your life. I don't really want to be around you 24 7. That's cool. I just see you as a thing. I want to just grab onto. So, but, but, that, but that's, that's my thing. That, that is my solution. I, it was like a eureka moment. That's my solution. So, like if every white person lives as a black person for a month, I was going to say a week, but I think a month is good. <laughs> I don't know whether they did last a month. Live for a month and put them in, like, in, Take them to Eastern Europe. Take them to the American South. Take them to the countryside in England. You know, to where places are totally white, avoid of any black people, and just 
experience that because experience is priceless experience is right you can't put money on experience when you experience something it's 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 it defeats any kind of thing that you could be told any book that you could read any book that you could read so that's my thing right there is for white people to live life as a black person for a month Become a Half Hope Sort member and gain access to exclusive videos and also the chance to watch films, anime, or different videos with your boy HH exclusively. Just click below on the join button to join in and become a Half Hope Sort member to gain access to these perks. Just click on the community icon over here to view the new members only posts just for you.